What's up, YouTube? Back with part three of that series that I was talking about when it comes to being new to being a mountain biker. Um, part one, I kind of shared my experiences, even part two as well. In this one, I want to talk a little bit, and this is going to be short, um, I want to talk a little bit about where to go from here once you've done everything that I've talked about in part one and part two. Um, quick shout out to PT's Grill in Wilmington, North Carolina. Shout out to my friend Joe. Um, if you've never been to Wilmington, it's a beach town on the coast of NC. And go to this restaurant. I'm talking about the best fries, burgers, and chicken sandwiches you can imagine. It'll change your life, I promise you. Uh, so shout out to PT's Grill. I've been going there since 1993, like, I think it was, 94. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a loyal customer, man. But anyway, um, where to go from here? So you got a year in. I'm just kind of talking on the standpoint of where I am now. So now I've done the hard tell thing. I've got, I've got a year under my belt. I've been on many trails, which I've done reviews on, talked to many other people, experts, friends, bike shops. Now it's time for me to upgrade to something that is going to last me for at least, I'm going to say two to three years, two to four years actually is what I'm looking for. A bike that I don't have to worry about selling or exchanging or buying or um, trading in anytime soon. So right now I've narrowed it down to three options and I advise you to do the same. I would narrow it down to maybe like your top five bikes and then start doing research on those and seeing where you go from there. Um, there are different bikes for different things. Um, I keep, I'm keeping my Nashiki Colorado just because it can go over anything. There's a lot of trails in Florida where there's a lot of stumps and tree roots and rocks and all of that. And that's what that bike's going to be for. So I'm looking more of a cross country bike. Um, where I can, you know, do some distance things because there are some trails that are kind of have longer stretches to ride where it's not as technical. And I like, I enjoy those trails. Those kind of trails I like to kind of be out there by myself on. The trails that are technical and rocky and crazy, I like to kind of be out there with other people. Um, so I'm looking at, looking at that type of bike next. Um, but I'm going to do my research, trust me, and I'm going to be talking to a lot of bike shops. I'm going to be looking online for used ones as well, so it doesn't have to be new unless I can really get a really good deal on a brand new one. The thing about that is, is once you start getting into, I'm going to say my max is going to be, I would say between 1500 and 2500 then we're probably looking at financing. So I may have to go through a bike shop at that point in time. And so um, I highly advise everyone else to do the same. Um, Let's see, when it comes to components, I'm kind of learning more and more about that as well. Pretty familiar with everything on a bike at this point, except for dropper posts. So that's a new topic for me. And I've been doing research on that. So I'm kind of looking into um, a new dropper post for my next bike as well. Um, it looks like the Fox the uh, Rock Shock and the um, what is it? The X Fusion, and then I think it's another one, the uh, Crank Brothers, and then it's one more that's really good. Oh, Bike Yoke! I've really heard good things about this four hundred dollar Bike Yoke drop post, uh, dropper post, which I know it seems very expensive, and most people would probably say we just go with the uh, the transfer, but. Um, yeah, a lot of good reviews on that bike yoke. So I'm going to be researching that, watching videos, and checking that out as well. And so the main thing is, is to do your research, experience things for yourself, talk to the professionals, talk to people who've been doing this for a long time, you know, and then make an informed decision based on all of that is, what, is really what this comes down to. I'm very happy I got into this sport. I really enjoy it. It's something different for me. It's something new. I can't run as much as I used to. Before I started getting all these leg and feet and, and ankle in injuries and stuff, I would be running all the time. I would do road races like um, at least once a month. I would do 12 races a year, anything from as small as a 5K to a marathon. And so I've been running since I was, um, I think I started when I was 14. And so, yeah, so it's been... Uh, it's, it's, it's not quite, but it's going on 30 years. I've been running, and so after a while, that's a lot of wear and tear on your body. And this isn't running you know, around the street. This is like literally long distance. I mean, in high school, there were workouts where I would run a marathon. I would literally go out and run 25 miles for practice. 
And so I just say that because I, I put a lot of miles on wearing tear on my knees, this cartilage and in my legs. And some people can do it forever, but my body is, is kind of broken. Not broken down. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to claim that. But my legs have pretty much had enough, I think, of that. So the transition easily was to cycling for me because um, it keeps me active. It keeps me outdoors and it gets me in nature and it gets my mind off things as well. That's why sometimes I like to do it with other people. Sometimes I like to do it by myself. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. So I, I enjoy it. Um, other than that, guys, you know, I'm not going to talk it to death. I just wanted to do that, um, give you that information. I hope it's beneficial for you guys. I hope it helps. And again, I'm excited. The next video that I am going to post is either going to be one or two. The next two videos, I'll say that. I'm either going to post me just finally getting on a bike again and, and taking a ride on the Nashiki, Colorado somewhere. Or I'm going to post, if I finance a bike, I may buy a new bike before Christmas. If I got to pay out of pocket, I buy a used one, then that's not going to happen until probably like maybe late winter, February, maybe even March of next year. So it depends. But it could possibly be if I find the right bike around the holidays, if they go on sale, I'm going to have one before Christmas. And that's going to be a video review of my new bike, which should be some type of full suspension bike. Um, and it was something else that I was going to say, but I forgot at the moment. So, but we'll see. Oh, I still do have the Avalanche um, for sale. I've been getting hit up so many times. Here's the thing, guys. It's so funny how when you sell stuff on OfferUp or Let Go and Craigslist or whatever, I got this bike listed at $350 cheaper than what you're going to get it for in store. It's a like new condition. And people are still trying to offer me like Walmart Target money bike money for it. I'm not going to go any lower than that. I've had other people who want to trade me firearms, people who want to give me cash plus other trades. Listen, I just want the dough. Like I'm just trying to get money for it. I'm selling it at a very, very good very fair price um, for what you're getting on this bike and it could pass for brand new um, so we'll see how it goes but yeah I've been getting hit up a lot but just letting everyone know it's still for sale as well and other than that um, that's about it you guys have any questions or comments do that below I'll catch you guys in the next video be safe out there on the trails talk to you later peace